Yo, what is going on, you fluffy few bass? Before we get into today's video, I just want to make a quick comment on the lack of content that I've been putting out uh, on my stream, on my YouTube, stuff like that. I've been traveling quite a bit recently. Just got back from Daytona Regionals. Had a bunch of stuff I had to take care of when I got back. About to head off to San Diego Regionals. So there's going to be a lack of content for about the next week or so until I get back from San Diego, San Diego Regionals. And then I'll be back into the full swing of things. Going to have a long break between travel i'm not gonna be traveling for another to another regional until dallas regionals which is like middle of january so nice long break gonna get the focus on the youtube content the streaming content stuff like that um, but there is going to be a lack of content for about another week or so until uh, i get back from san diego but let's go ahead and get into the deck that we're playing today we're going to be playing drew kate's uh, Guardian Omastar that he used to win Daytona Regionals. May as well give it a shot here. Now, the only thing really different from his list, maybe compared to some of the other lists, going down to just the Psychic Fairy Charms seems very reasonable to me. And then he is playing the Omastar line in here to give him a better matchup against the control decks, the Pidgey Control, the uh, Doll Stall, decks like that. Give yourself a chance against those decks with the Omastar. Uh, maybe even favorable. I'm actually not sure how this really fits against those matchups. I haven't played it a whole ton with the Omastar, um, but I feel like it could definitely actually become a favorable matchup. Some of those, one of those could become at least maybe a favorable matchup with the Omastar. At least it gives you a chance, that's at the very least. Uh, and then you got the Lugia in here. It's a non-GX, non-tag team GX attacker. Um, so you can throw off the prize trade. You know, they can KO a Guardian. Then you can use Lugia. They KO that. They go down to one prize. You can reset them to one and then finish out the game with Guardians. Um, also, the Lost Purge GX is super good against some matchups like abilities are i think it's pretty good against maybe it's actually even pretty good against the um digi blounds getting rid of some of their energy sounds pretty good actually um yeah i got some options with this guy uh beside but being able to reset our opponent down to one is also just like that's pretty good um i think that's all i wanted to say on the list nothing too ridiculously different besides those things uh it's got the stealthy hood in here so abilities are can't bring up your dude that has energy which is super nice. We don't want them to do that. And yeah, I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and get into some games and uh, see how it runs. Okay, we're up against the Pidgey Blounds here in this one. And this is definitely a harder matchup. But we have a chance because the deck does play the Omastar line. Which is something we're going to focus on uh, very aggressively here very early on. Uh, we're actually going to look up for the two turn two Omastar here. Um, let's go ahead and grab those. Yeah, we have turn two Omastar here. It doesn't get much better than that, I don't think. Um, then go ahead and attach to our active and pass to our opponent. Yeah, we have two turn two Omastar. We can maybe get the Lugia if we want with the Calm. And we have a Caitlyn today for a draw supporter next turn. And we have an energy for our Fairy Song. So if we're going to beat Pidgey Blounds with Guardian, this is about the way we have to do it. I think it's a pretty tough matchup. Um, I'm not sure how, you know, Drew Kate would feel about it. He is kind of the guardian guy right now. Um, I think he didn't do terribly against the ones he played against at, um, what's it called? At Daytona. I think he maybe went one and one, um, which is pretty reasonable. But every time I've played the matchup as the Placephalon player, I feel like I just run over a guardian. I don't play a whole ton of guardian, but I do play a ton of Pidgey Blounds. And I feel like as the Pidgey Blounds player, it's very easy for me to just run over guardian and have the... Have the matchup pretty much be a non-factor like i'm not worried about the matchup ever i'm just like well look another guardian all right i win the game um but we're gonna see what we can do we have pretty much a prime start here turn two almost star like i said and get off the fairy song and then hopefully uh get enough stuff between the caitlin and cynthia and then we'll get a greens out of our discard pile so we should have everything we need from there there is a blacephalon gx i have to imagine that would be pretty annoying to deal with actually um but our opponent goes ahead and ditches it bursting burn is not something i want to deal with really um, and also the burst GX maybe after we use Lugia, but they don't know we play the Lugia, so their 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 plan is to just go knockout Guardian, knockout Guardian. Um, and actually, this ten damage on the Guardian is pretty relevant. Um, we'll see how relevant it ends up becoming. But yeah, we have the Caitlyn and Cynthia. Hmm. Cynthia and Caitlyn. I don't want to discard a. Well, I guess discarding a switch actually isn't that bad because I can get whatever I want with the greens. Left. I want to keep the communication though because I want to be able to find the Lugia GX. I uh, definitely want to be able to find that. Draw three here. Nothing super ridiculously good. I go power plant, and it's super unlikely that they knock out our bench guardian. So I'm just gonna play like they're not gonna be able to get the knockout, especially when oh no, when Omastar's involved, they actually just can't. I was like, especially when Omastar's involved. Wait a second, if Omastar's involved, they actually just oh no. But now that I put Omastar in play, we can't use re greens. Okay, now I see what kind of situation we're in. 
All right, all right. We should still be fine. But yeah, we can't use greens anymore because we did just use put almost arm play. But having almost arm play is definitely way more important. It shuts down their opponent's fiery flints, shuts down their fire crystals. Not, I wouldn't, I don't regret putting almost arm in play. I, I definitely kind of didn't fully think it through. Um, but I'm definitely glad the almost R is in play. I'm not, I would never take it back. We're still fine. We just can't use this green sex turn like I thought we might be able to. That's fine. We'll figure something else out. We need to find ourselves a coach trainer or another Cynthia and Caitlyn or something. We'll be able to attack next turn for sure. They can't bring this Guardian up and knock it out. So we'll have a three energy Guardian in play on the next turn, which is all we really need. There's a blazer. Um, so no knockout here. Go for the Professor Elms. Take our 10. Gonna go ahead and there's a switch. Perfect. Switch into the other Guardian. And we're gonna go ahead and swing with the Storm. Yep. Knockout. They didn't have a very good turn last turn. So I think I'm just gonna leave it all on the active and then maybe move it off the active next turn. It's very unlikely without access to items like they currently have because of the Omastar that they'll be able to knock us out. So I think leaving it on the active is safe. It's fine. Maybe next turn we move it off. Hopefully we don't get punished here uh, for not moving the energy off and they don't all of a sudden just have a knockout. Nope, there's an Elm, so they're not gonna be able to get the knockout. Next turn though, I wouldn't be too ridiculously surprised if they got a knockout as they're gonna have a four Pidgeys, so they're gonna be seeing a total of 16 cards and be able to select what they want from those. So uh, next turn, we'll probably keep the energy on the bench, but uh, yeah, turn two almost are doing work. We're set up really well to be able to deal with the Pidgey Bonds here. Uh, definitely see how this guy can give us a chance in the matchup. Definitely not, uh, it's still still probably a rough matchup overall. Our opponent didn't have the most the best start and we just kind of walked into turn two almost star having the uh, almost star in our hand. Uh, off the start. We also have the communication as well. Um, we don't need, don't need to use the communication when we have the Elmo Star. So, yeah, kind of worked out pretty well for us. Not gonna lie. So, uh, but we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take that uh, advantage when we can get it in these kind of rough matchups and uh, we're gonna run with it for sure. Um, and yeah, it's given us quite the advantage here. Our opponent's super far behind right now. Um, they did finally get this going. They chose not to evolve that Ditto into Vigioto. So, that makes you think they play something weird. They also have a Blacephalon prized. Um, and actually, currently, they're not going to be able to knock out our Guardian because they didn't attach for turn and they won't have access to items. So they can't go a skateboard, bench, attach, what's it called? Bench, attach, and then uh, retreat because they can't attach the skateboard and welder to it. So we're actually in a super good spot still. And we don't have to move the energy off the active unless they play something weird. But I can't even think of anything weird that they could play that would get them out of the scenario. So we should just be fine here. Next turn, however, we will be moving the energy back for sure. Um, they keep building up their hand with the air mails. Down to two plus Eflon GX, down to fire energy as well. But when we take a knockout next turn, they will actually have access to items. So that's where it gets scary for us is we're not going to not take a knockout next turn. But although we could draw pass. I wouldn't hate draw passing depending on how their turn goes. And wait until we can set up Lugia. Get a draw supporter, start seeing more cards, because we're not forced to knock anything out next turn. Wait until we see a reset stamp, because they do have a really big hand, so we might want to go ahead and reset stamp that before we give them access to items. So I'm actually, depending on what they do on their turn, I might just draw and pass. If they don't set up any way to retreat their active next turn, there's a Victini. We could KO the Victini, though, but it looks like they plan on using the Victini. But that will only hitting us for 60 damage if they do attack with Victini here. Maybe they're trying to get energy in play. But we will double custom knock out Victini if it, uh just stays on the bench like that. Oh, they play a nine tails. Okay. Still not a whole lot going on for our opponent though. They're only gonna be able to hit us for what? 60? And we can knock it out. And then once again, they don't have access to items. So I don't think I'm really scared of that, but they could bring up our Omastar. Hit it for a hundred. Um, and I guess that would be pretty annoying. We can't move our Omastar. And like I said, we don't have access to greens. There's a lot of things we could top deck here though. Mallow and Lana would be a big one. It would heal the Omastar. Let's see what we get here. That is a power plant. Um, Don't really want to use double customs, so we're just going to go ahead and pass over to our opponent, I guess. We'll get access to greens next turn. I guess that's an upside of this current situation. We do lose our Omastar, though, which is the downside of this current situation. Uh, and then makes it way harder for us to win the game at that point. But uh, there's still a chance. We're going to get out the Lugia at some point and go into that. Ideally next turn. Um, probably reset stamp our opponent so we could go like greens for spinner Love. Well, this will get the Lugia spinner plus reset stamp reset this hand that they built up 
a lot over the last couple turns. They actually might not even be able to knock out the Omastar. It's very possible they can't knock us out because they can't get energy into the discard pile. Because if they use Nine Temptations, they have to bring something else up. So, yeah, very possible Omastar lives another turn. And then maybe then we top deck a Malomana or a Tag Call or Switch. Even a Switch would be good. That's one energy into the discard pile. If they find... No, they can't use Fiery Flint. I was going to say if they find a Fiery Flint, that would work. Um, there's another welder being used, so they're down to... Oh, they might attack us with nine tails, actually. Yeah, that makes sense to me. They're probably going to attack us with nine tails here. The only way they can actually knock this out. There's a Blacephalon to the bench, which we definitely want to probably double Custom Catcher and knock out. And they'll be down to just one Blacephalon left. Yeah, I think we definitely want to double Custom knock out the Blacephalon. That's going to be the game plan. They, di they also didn't take Blacephalon off the prize cards. So they're going to be in trouble. Yeah. They're going to be in trouble. Definitely a mistake from our opponent there. I'm going to go ahead and greens like I said I would. Let me get the oops spinner and the reset stamp. Um, it's not that big of a hand, but they've been working on it for a while here. So we definitely want to cut that down to size. Hit him with the stamp. Hit him with that double cluster on the Blacephalon. And then they shouldn't be able to knock out any of our Pokemon next turn because they won't have access to a baby Blacephalon for sure because the last one is prized. Bench Lugia, Ash Lugia, and then Storm. Knock it out. And we want to go three to the Lugia, because if they really want a great catch of the Lugia and knock it out, that's fine with me. And then we'll put one over on the uh, Guardian over here. And that's it. If they really want a great catch or knock out the Lugia, the thing that can for sure attack next turn, that is fine with me. That doesn't do anything to me. Uh, we have greens next turn. We can get a switch. We can get a tag switch with an energy spinner. The second energy spinner is in the deck. Um, probably would just go for a switch, knock something out with the Lugia. Although that does mean that it's easier for the Victini to potentially get the knockout on like a Lugia. I don't know if I really care about that happening. Um, I kind of do want the Lugia to die at some point for sure. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll let Lugia go in this situation, I think. Uh, but yeah, opponent comes up. Nine tails. Man, we'll see what they got. Oh, I forgot to power plant away their heat factory. I should have done that. That's definitely, I should have definitely power planted their heat factory. It was on my mind to do after I played the reset stamp or the custom catchers. And then I just completely forgot to do it. So next time, or make sure you replace your opponent's heat factory with power plants, folks. Especially when it's a deck that power plant does absolutely nothing against except replace their stadiums that are currently in play. Definitely make sure you do that, especially when you have two power plant in hand. So you just have extra excess power plants that could be put in play and utilized. Put those in play, my dudes. Don't, uh, don't do as I do, do as I say. Put your power plans in play. Uh, so yeah, should have put power plan in play. Fine, it's not that big of a deal. We'll be okay. Uh, there's a flint. Uh, so they can get quite a few energy in the discard pile here, but they're definitely not going to be able to one-shot anything, I don't think. They would need a ridiculous turn. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what kind of turn they would need to be able to one-shot something this turn. It would be, have to be insane. An insane turn. Uh, the fact that they have the Nine Tails makes you think they also don't play the Poke Dolls. Um... And they have Blacephalon GX, so I have to find space for those cards. So usually Poke Dolls are the things to get cut when people are trying to add cards like that into the Pidgey Blounds deck. I know that's what I cut initially as well, was I want to just add more consistency. So the dolls left, that they're not very consistency-based. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so they have to leave. There's a Welder from our opponent. Like I said, they only have the one Baby Blound left, and it is in the prize cards. They for some reason decided, well, I don't want that guy anymore. Uh, so they didn't take him, which is fine with me. It's gonna gonna work out good for us here, I think. Uh, we'll see what they have this turn. I can't imagine anything like I'm trying to like, come up with something that could be like detrimental to us, like uh, where we don't want to see it. But I can't. I don't think they have anything in their deck that does that. I think we're pretty good, pretty well off here. Just have to kind of go through the motions here, and then we'll eventually win this game. I think. We'll see though. Maybe they have something stronger than I think uh, loaded up here. There's a welder usage though. That's not very good. It's okay. Victini is ready to go, but I don't really mind if Victini is ready to go, I don't think. And then I assume they're just going to flame tail us for 90. They could go to Victini and hit us for 100. All right, looks like that's what they're going to favor instead is the infinity on our Guardian for 100. Uh, but once again, that doesn't give them a baby Blacephalon. We're then going to be able to knock out the Victini with Psychic from the Lugia. This attack does 30 more damage times the amount of energy attached to the opponent's active. Yeah, so we can do exactly 90 with the Lugia. Um, oh, there's a flint. Oh, we're just getting rid of two Adrachis. All right. So I was going to say, well, 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 maybe they'll bring up our Lugia. I don't know. Well, they got no fires with that flint. So, yeah, that's not what's going to happen. All right. Here we go. Infinity. 100 damage. Not very much. 
locked themselves out of the game by not taking this Blacephalon off the prizes, and then even benching the Blacephalon I think was a mistake. When they benched this Blacephalon, I'm pretty sure that was just kind of a mistake. There was like no reason. Yeah, and there's a concession from our opponent, not surprised. Almost started doing a ton of work early on. We got pretty fortunate to be able to just candy it out the way we did, but that's what we need to win this matchup, I think. I think we need some good, solid disruption from Omastar, maybe a slight mistake from our opponent, uh, if we're ever going to win this one consistently, and we'll definitely take that dub. All right. Up against the Mew Box, I believe, here in this one. Uh, yeah, we'll start with the Tag Call, get a couple Guardians out of the deck. Uh, do I want to send the NK land? No, I just do Guardian, sounds fine to me. Um, so we do need to get our... Um, those those are pretty good i should check for the other one i didn't i'm gonna get punished for that and pass over to our opponent all right we're in a good spot already turn one got these things out that's what we need the fairy charm psychics don't allow our opponents to get any early hits on our guardians um however it is uh what is it guardian does play not guardian they want them to hit our guardians they're playing Mewtwo Box. Mewtwo Box does play a lot of ways to deal with Guardian right now. They play the Turtonator, play the Double Blaze, Reshizard. Yeah, they got a lot of stuff in the deck that makes it pretty reasonable for them to get around our tags. So our real win condition is Reset Stamp, Power Plant, and maybe Omastar if we can get it into play as well. Omastar is not never bad to have in play. Their bench is almost always going to be bigger than ours. So yeah, that uh, might want to set up that as well. But yeah, our win condition is definitely that as opposed to just using, like putting our putting our charms in play and being like, well, you lose the game. Almost every Mewtwo player plays ways to beat the charms. If, if we just both sit here and both set up and hit back and forth, then they'll win the game probably. Um, so we do need to involve Reset Stamp and Power Plant. And once we get those involved though, we pretty much do, for the most part, I think, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Guardian definitely favored in this matchup, even if they have ways to get through our charms. We're still, we're still favored. There's a giant hearth. Deal. Would definitely like to coach trainer again. We might just go like Cynthia and Caitlyn for coach trainer and coach trainer next turn. That'd be fine as well. Uh, we do want to find greens at some point so we can find like our other fairy charm, stuff like that. Um, there's a cherish ball from our opponent. Interesting that that wasn't used earlier. I guess that doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. Cherish ball. I'm gonna go ahead and grab themselves a Mewtwo, I assume. I can't imagine what else they would grab. Yeah, there's the Mewtwo GX. And coming into play. And, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, there's a rainbow. Yeah, not too scared of anything yet. Tag Purge is something that can be really annoying to deal with, but we do have what's it called to deal with that if we have to. Uh, there's a greens. I don't really want a greens yet, but I guess we're gonna take a greens. Um, I don't think I can really think that I want a green. Well, I could get the other, what's it called, just so we don't get great catcher hit on the bench. Yeah, okay, let's go with the greens then. Get ourselves a that, and I don't know, a power plant actually doesn't even seem that bad to grab right now. Force our opponent to find a stadium or something like that. Grab that, boop, put that in play, the other charm, and then just fairy song to the bench. And show. Don't really need to be too much more aggressive than that, but that's fine up to our opponent to come up with answers to our stuff and once they do we still have the late game potential of just going reset stamp and what's it called there is a mega low punny that guy is super annoying to deal with actually he can hit us well, we'll generally have to have two gx's in play so he's gonna hit us pretty hard yeah it's a pretty annoying a pretty annoying bunny to deal with there we do have uh the mellow lawn is pretty good as a response but uh still very annoying to deal with the mega low punny is hopefully it is not hopefully our opponent does not find a switch that'd be very unfortunate if our opponent also had to switch this turn to bring it into the active and swing on us with the Mega Low Honey. Because it hits us for 180 and Malolana only heals 120. Um, which means it gets a little bit awkward. Okay, I gotta decide what to get rid of here. Maybe I'll discard the Guardian here. Go ahead and grab the greens. Greens is almost always the correct thing to grab. Greens is always a little bit better than everything else. Okay, so now we got everything here. We can go tag call. Get the last two of these out of the deck. We can switch to the Guardian and attach to the Guardian. And then we can double Custom Catcher up the Mega Low Punny and hit it um, for 150 before it gets to hit us. It's a super important um, interaction here. Us hitting the Low Punny before the Low Punny hits us. 150. And then go ahead and leave it over. 
our opponent. Yep, 150 before they get to hit us for 180. Super big deal, now they're gonna hit us for 180 and then we can Malo and Lana heal this one. Uh, move it to the bench, it'll only have 60 on it then. Uh, and then yeah, we'll be in a pretty good spot. Oh, I'll probably get rid of the Faba, probably plus my top deck. Faba plus top deck, if not Faba plus Cynthia and Caitlyn. Probably fine to Malo and Lana away. Maybe Faba plus other Malo and Lana, but uh, yeah, I'm feeling like we're in a pretty good spot here. Power plant has just randomly stuck, which is great. It's always nice when your first power plant just kind of sticks, but I guess they haven't really dug through their deck too much, but could definitely be pre preventing them from playing something like a Dedenne or something the power plant could. So um, that is also not Mars Shadow, the stadium bump Mars Shadow. So that's maybe prize from our opponent. Oh, they had a heart the whole time. Never mind. Let's see if they got anything else going on. They used one welder earlier. I'm surprised that they wouldn't have like a Dedenne or another welder here though. I'm, s I'm sure they have something like that going on. I would have to imagine anyways two more fire is there going to be is it going to be backed up by a, a welder here let's see yeah if i had to guess nope there's a malo and lana that's pretty annoying as well actually healing the megalopony is pretty annoying here from our opponent i wonder if they're just going to hard retreat the mewtwo now and hit us with the megalopony can't think of anything else they could turbo strike but this that does mean that they don't actually do any damage for the turn it looks like that is going to be their game plan Turbo Strike, no damage. That is fine with me. Yeah, that's not really that big of a deal to me. Um, we're gonna draw a custom. Um, I kind of just want to Cynthia and Caitlyn here and discard the Faba. Then we'll have to switch into the other Guardian. Get the Coach Trainer for later. One, two, three. Gotta reset Sam for later as well. Catch here. Switch and then Storm. 150 and I think I'm gonna move all the energy back just so we can GX attack for the full effect next turn if we want to um, yeah our opponent shouldn't be able to like one shot shouldn't be able to one shot this turn anything like that so yeah now we can G if they you know top deck oops I forgot to put power plant in play I did it again last game I forgot to put the power plant in play this game I forgot to put power plant in play um, we could have power planted the put the power plant in play so that way they can't just like top deck to Dene um, yeah, I guess I'm just really bad at putting power plant in play. They grabbed Mewtwo and a Cynthia and Caitlyn, so they'll go to Cynthia and Caitlyn away the Mewtwo and probably grab, well, they might want to grab the Malo and Lana, actually. They might need that extra healing to survive this game. Um, yeah, if I was them, I would grab, I would grab Malo and Lana. Looks like they're maybe going for the Hearth, though. Okay, so I guess then we'll Hearth one of the fires away. That's also pretty reasonable. That thins out their deck a little bit more as well. I actually kind of like that, I guess. I end up with a lot of energy in their discard pile, though, so that can be a problem. They could just actually just start to run out of energy because our ener energy is very split up right now. It's like two, three, two. They do want to build up into something like a double blaze or yeah, a Turtonator attack or something like that. So they need to condense their energy at some point. But it looks like they are going to be setting up that Mewtwo on the bench to take a knockout on the next turn. But we're going to go with the GX attack power plant, put their hand to zero. Once again, as that's why I did want to set up this five energy on the bench Guardian to be like, well, if they do, uh, draw, you know, top deck to Denny or something here and get something set up. They can go ahead and put their hand back to zero, fully reset it, and kind of just trap them once again. That's the that's the game plan. That's the way it's headed right now. Our opponent shouldn't be able to, well, they'll be two energy off from a double blaze, but at a zero card hand, I'm not afraid of them actually being able to double blaze on the following turn. Because uh, they can't draw like stadium removal plus the Dene in one card, so they shouldn't actually be able to do anything on the next turn. Next turn, they should be. They should be limited to actually nothing. All right, they are going out of their way to set up the Reshi's art though, which is going to make that even slower. Um, so yeah, we're going to go power plant. <clears throat> I'm just going to use one of these Malo Lanas for the switch effect. Put that in the discard pile, and then full GX attack here, putting our car, our putting our opponent's hand to zero cards. Like I said. Um, and yeah, with one top deck, this deck can't really, with one card in hand, Mewtwo can't really do anything. They can't, um, they can't, uh, Welder, because they need Welder plus energy. They can't, uh, yeah, they just, they're very limited, very limited with just one card in hand. Um, they did send up the Mega Low Punting, which we can't Mallow and Lana heal, because we don't have another attacker set up, but if we just hit it, uh, it's very possible our opponent just loses to this thing having damage on it, which is what we're going to go for here. I think I'm even going to go, well, let's just go Coach Trainer first. Got the tag switch. Oh, we can just retreat. So now we can just go retreat, attach, tag switch. Making so our opponent doesn't draw any prize cards next turn. Uh, or making it that much harder, I guess. We can bench this guy now. Um, tag call? No, not necessary. 
storm here. 150. We're going to move these two energies off this guy. Put them safely over here. I guess it would be maximum safety. Maximum safety. Move this one back as well. Three on the bench guy, two on the active guy. We're set up to win the game. As long as this little punny doesn't get healed, which I doubt it will on our opponent's next turn. They did get the Malolana back, but they only have a two-card hand. So this two-card hand would have to be like Stadium Bump plus a Dedene. And yeah, there's the concession from our opponent. We take another dub here with the Guardian deck. Uh, pretty easy dub in the end there. Yeah, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And that's going to do it for this video on the Guardian deck, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Pretty easy to see why this deck is uh, managed to win a regional the regional, the Daytona regional, super powerful deck. You can kind of beat everything if you draw the outs you need for the matchups, but uh, I still think it has its rough matchups in some of the more aggressive fire decks, but uh, still beatable, definitely for sure. If your opponent doesn't draw perfectly, you'll have a chance to just kind of get reset stamp involved, and then that's sometimes just enough to beat the more aggressive decks in general. So uh, that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a like. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe. Have a good day. Thanks for watching, and peace.